Welcome back to our channel. We have an astrologer. Her name is Eliza. Do you want to talk about yourself at all or what you do? Sure, it's Eliza. Um, Eliza, oh my god. <laughs> story of my life. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yes, my name is Eliza. Um, I'm an astrologer. I write for Cosmopolitan. I am an author. I have a podcast. I do a lot of things. I'm a Capricorn rising with a Leo sun, so I'm just stay busy. <laughs> but I've been an astrologer for my entire adult life now, so it's it's kind wow. of crazy to be in my 30s and be like, wow, I guess it wasn't just a phase. <laughs> yeah. Us Mom. still being emo. <laughs> well, that's amazing. I have no idea what your signs mean, but I am excited yeah. to learn a little bit about all of that. I have your guys' charts here, and I'm so excited to look at them with you. And also, I'm curious about... In the email you guys wrote where I asked for you if you have any questions, you said, we know nothing. But I don't think that that could be possibly true, like completely, okay. because you guys are having an astrologer on. So you have to like, on some level, be down with the stars. Oh, for yeah. sure. I guess I just don't know, because everyone's like, like, I know that my zodiac sign is a cancer. And I'm like, okay, well, that tracks because I'm like an emo bitch and I cry all the time <laughs> but like that's the foundation of what I know but because I know that there's like other things that go along with it but I'm like what does that mean for me as a mm -hmm. person <laughs> and I feel like I'm an Aries my birthday's March 21st so it's like right on the day and I feel like whenever I read about it it's not me at all so I'm also curious about that let's talk about your zero degrees Aries sun for a second because oh, I think ooh, it's okay. really important so I think that's a really good place to begin because you are sort of like the model example of someone who would probably have, yeah, just generally a model example, <laughs> but of somebody yeah. who would have prescribed to the cusp sign theory because you are born right at the end of what Pisces season would be at the beginning of Aries season. So I'm sure that growing up you identified as like a Pisces Aries cusp or you heard that you might be a Pisces Aries cusp. Um, but there are actually no cusp signs in astrology. So <gasps> wait, so I'm it's, only Aries. It's all been a lie. Yeah. You are, oh my God. Is her saying she's not an Aries, like an Aries trait? <laughs> well, we're going to unpack it. Because... <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I had therapy because... yesterday. <laughs> I'm sorry if there's overlap, but there <laughs> might be. <laughs> in astrology, each zodiac sign goes from zero degrees to 29 degrees. And the reason for that is because we're talking about a 360 degree wheel. So each 12 sign has 30 degrees, uh, 12, 360 divided by 12 equals 30 for each sign. And they start at zero and they go to 29. So when we're at either zero degrees, the first degree or 29 degrees, the last degree, there's a certain potency and a certain magic to that zodiac sign in that very critical, it's what it's called in astrology, it's a critical degree. So a zero degrees Aries is actually one of the most electrically charged uh, <laughs> placements in the whole zodiac because Whoa. you are, because the zodiac begins at zero degrees Aries. It's the first sign of the zodiac. So you're the first sign of the zodiac and you're the first degree of the zodiac. So you are basically like kicking off the entire <laughs> astrological theatrics. Oh my God, the <laughs> queen. Um, yeah. The queen of the, the, the zodiac signs. Wait, so what does that mean? Like, should I be like, have this crazy personality? Well, that's only one part of your birth chart. Okay. So we're talking about your sun <laughs> sign specifically, but the zero degrees Aries sun is meaningful because what your sun sign shows you is how you illuminate, how you take up space, how you want to be seen, how you care about being seen. And zero degrees Aries is definitely going to show us somebody who like, I know I'm supposed to have a platform. I know that I am supposed to like be, I'm here for a reason, right? And yeah. maybe the question for you is like, why am I here? Like what Ooh. are the different pursuits that I need to do to figure out what the meaning of, of that zero degrees Aries is? It's like a lifelong journey. You were born with like a significance. You know, you were born because you feel like you want to find the value of you being here, which is a shared experience for a lot of people. But I think with the zero degrees Aries, there's a certain potency to it that mm -hmm. really makes it like a quest, you know? Yeah. It's a quest to find your purpose. Oh, like there could be a Disney movie written about you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no cusp, Carl. Let us talk about your zodiac sign and be 
in eight degrees cancer Aaron a little Ooh, bit now okay. too. One of the one of the questions that you guys had was about your compatibility. Uh -huh. And I love the fact that you guys are both cardinal signs. So something what is that, that isn't <laughs> Yeah, like what is So that? it's not as discussed, but there are uh, three different what's called modalities in astrology and they show the expression of the zodiac sign. So we have cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Cardinal are initiators, uh, fixed are sort of maintainers and stabilizers, and mutable are changers. And both Aries and Cancer are cardinal signs, which mean that they're really good at starting things. They may not be as good at completing them, but <laughs> Wait, they both so are. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But like both of you guys like hype each other up about like I got a great idea, let's do this. <laughs> You know, Carly might be approaching it more from like, it's a passion, I gotta give it a try. <laughs> Whereas Aaron is approaching it more from this Cancerian, emotional, like sensitive place of like, I just feel it in my gut. Um, Carly, you're being driven from passion. Aaron, you're being driven by emotions, but they're both initiators, you know? It's like both like, let's get it going. But then the question is, how do you follow up? And the rest of the chart is kind of what helps us understand the full picture. But that is definitely why you guys have good compatibility um, as friends and then also as and professionally too. We could oh, get like little matching cardinal tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Love it. I also want to talk about you guys both having air sign moons because that is important too. So we've talked about now your sun signs, which are how you sort of show up in the world. Um, it is your ego, your expression, your sense of self. The moon is what is going on behind the scenes. It's your emotional inner world, how you feel about things. And it's not necessarily how you're showing up, but it's how you feel about having had shown up. And both of you guys have moon signs that are in air. Um, so Carly, your moon sign is in Gemini and Aaron, your moon sign is in Aquarius. And the air element is really social. It's really interested in like, well, how did that go? What's the feedback? What can we learn? How can we communicate? How can we discuss it? So another amazing compatibility between you guys is that at the end of the day, you are sort of feeling based on communication and the way that you guys can sort of check in with each other, be honest with each other. Um, transparency is so important. It's better to over communicate than under communicate for both of you guys. Mm. So that's also something that you guys agree on and it really uh, synchronizes astrologically. It's really interesting because Carly and I both have like a weird thing with hating confrontation with other people. <laughs> Does that have, but like together, I feel like we communicate very well and are like generally open with yeah, how like we're feeling fine. about things. But like we both always have this like burdening feeling of like having to confront something if it makes us uncomfortable. Would that have to do with like our moons, like you're saying? You know, I don't know if. Carly hates confrontation as much as you do, Aaron. <laughs> I think oh that God, Carly so might funny. be. I'm like, I feel like I, I do think... for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I think that I mean, hating confrontation is kind of like a general statement. The reason to hate confrontation might be different. You guys might both share disliking having to deal with like the, I don't know the, I the the stress of like not being liked or not being understood properly or not being sort of seen or recognized in the way that you want to be in a conversation. But I think that the deep underlying meaning behind it is different. It seems to me like for you, Carly, you get really angry. Like you have a temper. If you get, if you fly off the handles, you have a temper and that Ooh. isn't something that you want to necessarily <laughs> like um, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So you'd rather like keep it chill than have that come out and that part of you become sort of like over exaggerated. Whereas Aaron, I feel like you are really sensitive and you're, you kind of like are edging on psychic and you take in a lot of feelings and you're really emotional. That's true. And Very true. Yes. I normally cry. And part <laughs> <laughs> crying is great. It's really great for water signs to cry. Ooh, oh, why? Because it's water. So it's just like, it's, uh, regenerative for you. Oh my god, oh. it's like shedding my skin and then getting a new layer. Yes, exactly. Yeah, recharging. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> Carly, I've never seen Carly like flip out on anyone. Yeah, so I it's honestly, interesting that you say that, that she's yeah. like hiding it. <laughs> I don't feel like I am though, but maybe somewhere deep down I am. Well, how would you say, I mean, you have a moon in Gemini, which is definitely like uh, a neutralizer, you know, yes. and then you also have a Capricorn rising, which means you take your work really seriously. You, you, you know, you take sort of 
the way that you show up in the world, which rising sign shows sort of what our landscape is mm -hmm. really seriously. So you're also not like trying to like destroy your reputation, <laughs> yeah. you know, your <laughs> reputation is important to you. Yeah. So you're not going to like, but maybe the question is like, maybe the issue, not issue, but the, <laughs> You can say maybe it. the context for it is that there wasn't a space for you growing up where you felt like you could get angry. A hundred percent, one hundred percent. Oh my god! I literally it's talk so about weird. this in therapy because my parents never fought, and I'm like basically I was raised as an only child, so like there was never any confrontation or anything. Right. So maybe it's like that's the part of you that is it's uncomfortable because there is no precedent I, for it, exactly and because there's not a template. Yeah, oh my god. for sure. And I don't know, you said neutralizer. I guess I'm not exactly sure what that means in like astrology terms, but I, to me, it sounds like for me, I just like want everyone to get along all the time. And I'm just very like, I see both sides to everything. Is that kind of what yes, you were that saying? Is definitely with any air moon, um, we are kind of sort of stabilizing a situation. Uh -huh. You have a moon in Gemini, which is the twin. So that is very much about the duality of like, okay, I can see both sides. Um, Aquarius is the water bearer, so it's kind of like holding, it's the it's a vase, you know? So it's like holding all the emotions and being like, all right, everyone, you could put your stuff in here, but like, let's look at it objectively. So both of you guys with your moon in Gemini and then the moon in Aquarius are really good at being able to like sort of take a step back and look at something from a bird's eye view, um, which is definitely to both of your advantages and also mitigates any of that like taking it personally. Mm -hmm. You know, you can remove the personal from it, which allows Ooh. that level of neutrality. I feel like I definitely take things a lot more personal. Yeah. Yeah, you're a cancer son. <laughs> <laughs> and you also, Erin, I should mention yeah. that you also have a Pisces rising. So you have okay. double water energy. Um, this is also God. like how with your chart, with your chart, I really see like, okay, this is a lot. I mean, looking at your chart, Aaron, I would say like, you probably know how to talk to ghosts. Oh. You probably have like some spirits that you work with or like that want to work with you because you have the moon in your psychic 12th oh house. You have this Pisces rising. Oh my God. I just got the chills. <laughs> and then, oh, I need to tell you guys both this. You guys are both, um, having your Saturn returns. What does this what mean? Does that mean? Like tax returns? <laughs> <laughs> not tax returns. We don't get those. <laughs> no, not, believe it or not, this is not IRS related. Um, okay. Like, <laughs> so your Saturn return is um, a really important astrological milestone that happens every 29 and a half years. Oh my God. Um, and it's when Saturn, the planet of rules, commitment, authority, responsibilities, comes back to the position it occupied at your exact moment of birth and it takes Saturn this duration of time to create a full orbit. So we have this in our late 20s and it really is the turning point of, you know, it's basically like our astrological bat mitzvah. It's like the turning point of becoming an adult uh, oh in the eyes of Saturn. So during a Saturn return, there's often a lot of renegotiating that needs to happen. Um, what do you want? What do you care about? What are your values? What does it mean for you to take care of yourself? How do you want to take care of yourself? How do you want to, you know, what is going to sort of set the tone for the next 30 years of your life? So there's often a lot of upheaval that comes in our late 20s because of this. But on the other side of Saturn return, we have things a lot more figured out, which is really wonderful. That's so funny because we both just bought houses. <laughs> yeah, Saturn return is all about commitment too. So it's making big commitments. So crazy when you say that because... With the commitment thing, like Aaron literally got married. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it makes sense. Yeah. This started um, last year, 2020, oh, wow. and it's still, it's continuing now. Um, but between 2020 and the first half of this year, 2021, that is for both of you guys because your Saturns are only one degree apart. Aaron, your Saturn is at five degrees oh, yeah, Aquarius. So close. And Carly, your Saturn is at four degrees Aquarius. So both of you guys had them uh, in tandem. Oh my God. We're so close. Sisters. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> I really is love that. Is that why we, we really do go through everything together? <laughs> no, for real. Do you guys want to look at the compatibility with your partners? Yes. 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 My husband is freaking out <laughs> about it. He's like, what if she says that we have to get a divorce? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. I would never say something like that. That's like, it's, that would be so criminal. <laughs> it was just like funny because I'm like, okay, she may, but it's fine. <laughs> well, I, I, I first of all would never say something like that ever because if you guys are married, I'm going to like trust that you're married for a reason and that you want yeah. to be married yeah. as a opposed to just it happening haphazardly. So then instead of saying you guys need to get divorced, if I saw really <laughs> bad compatibility, 
uh, for instance, which I don't, I would maybe never so say, say that. I, would, I just wouldn't say it at all. I would just say, here's how to... You would never know if I ha saw really bad compatibility because I would frame okay. it either way as like... No, tell us! Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no bad compatibility. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> okay, everything okay. is a choice, you know? Everything is a choice of like, yeah. how yeah. do you want to work together? If you guys like being together, then what does it mean for you guys to be together in the best way possible? Um, totally. True. I guess, I guess I some just, people like toxic toxicity. So. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because... I think for us, it's like, I've never really thought about it. Like, oh, wait, uh, like based on our signs, are we compatible? I've never thought about that. But I always see these TikToks of people being like, I found out he was a so-and-so and I just didn't even text him back. It's horrible. I mean, <laughs> so I'm like, what does that mean? First. <laughs> it means that they're probably 19 years old. <laughs> Call it, it, Gen Z. Z. it means it's Gen Z and like that's okay because you can do that shit when you're 19 but obviously when you're having yeah. your Saturn return and you're growing up and you're marrying someone you're not going to suddenly <laughs> stop texting yeah. your husband back you're not allowed to ghost <laughs> yeah. no no ghosting in Saturn return definitely not no ghosting in Saturn <laughs> returns so both of you guys um are with Libras did you know that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. And guess, very, of course we I are. Well, of, <laughs> from an astrological perspective also, of course you are, because Libra is another cardinal sign. <gasps> so cool. it, is, it like folds into this compatibility of the cardinal initiators. Um, Libra is the sign that is the balance. Um, it is very much about sort of like coexisting, harmonizing, um, creating, you know, wanting things to be equal, wanting things to be fair, wanting things to be just. And for both of you guys who have your air sign moons, um, this is a perfect alignment because, you know, we have Carly's moon in Gemini. We have Aaron's moon in Aquarius. And those are two of the air signs. And then the third air sign is Libra. So there's oh just God. this amazing um, <laughs> symmetry that is sort of shows up in all of these charts. And then on top of that, Aaron, um, your husband has an Aquarius moon just like you. <gasps> so you guys both have these Aquarius moons, which mean you're both very intellectual. <laughs> you really like to, you think about things. You think about big things. Um, you care about the world. You are humanitarians at heart. And oh you God. want to make it's the true. world a better place <laughs> together. Um, and it's really beautiful. Yeah. We don't have to get divorced. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yes, it's very, very cute. Um, and then on top of that, your husband, Aaron, is also uh, a Virgo rising, which is the opposite of your rising sign, which is Pisces <clears throat> rising. Okay. So Virgo is Virgo and Pisces are all about helping people. Um, Virgo does this in a very practical way. And Pisces does this in a more like spiritual, sensitive you know, like, tell me what's going on kind of way. Virgo is like, okay, let me fix it. But on that access to have both Virgo and Pisces present, you guys are both very committed to like wanting to fix things if they're not going right, you know? So even if mm -hmm. there, you get into some like sticky spots in your marriage, which is like inevitable because relationships of all shapes and sizes are hard. Um, both totally. of you are committed to wanting to communicate, to be fair, and to fix whatever the problem is, which is obviously a really great long-term uh, way of approaching challenges. Oh my God, it's so us. <laughs> so cute, so sweet. It does sound like us if I'm being honest. Yeah. Carly, let us talk about your boyfriend, um, who is also okay. a Libra. So again, you know, just fits in so perfectly to this cardinal air sign world. Um, he is a Gemini rising. So again, we have an amazing compatibility point between your moon being in Gemini and then his rising, which is what was coming over the Eastern horizon at his time of birth. So it really is sort of like the world through his eyes. Um, and it aligns with the way you feel about things. So the way that he sees the world is also um, really soothing to sort of like what your emotional needs and expectations are for how to navigate in the world. So. There's just this sort of like, even, you know, even the things that are anxieties for you of like, oh no, is it this way? Like he understands them because those are also part of his astrological infrastructure. So he's definitely never going to be like, you're crazy, you know, and yeah, do that no. like horrible <laughs> gaslighting shit. Yeah, um, no. <laughs> because he really understands what you're going through, both good and bad. And let's see, his moon is in Pisces. So he's really, really sensitive and really musical. Um, yep, he's an artist. <laughs> 
Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Pisces moons are love music. They love art. They love being able to express themselves the, express themselves abstractly because sometimes their emotions are like so big um, that only art, music, sounds, painting, sort of these sort of more ethereal practices are really going to channel the big feelings that exist inside. That's I literally have clothes. I don't know if you can see it on Zoom, but I literally have like clothes here that he's printing like screen printing and stuff <laughs> right here. yeah so art making is like so so essential to who yes. he is to what his happiness is and obviously Cooking. you also that's amazing well that's really delightful yes <laughs> we both got lucky there yeah, yeah. Wow, that is i don't know how <laughs> mazel tov ladies <laughs> cheers really did it. but you guys are both really good at being in partnership you know yeah. and you've practiced also being in partnership through your friendship and through your working relationship, both of you guys <laughs> choosing Libra partners, which is the sign of balance and partnership, <laughs> is like, of course you did. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Why yeah. would you? <laughs> Literally. So are there any other questions or things that you guys want to look at in your charts? Erin, maybe you should, I feel like you should ask about your health anxiety. Yeah, I guess another one was, I was curious, does like astrology at all have anything to do with health? Or like, cause like I know that like as, uh, who I am as a person like I'm anxious all the time and like I cry all the time and like I don't know like does that like my sign have anything to do with like why I would experience health problems say so your moon is in at 22 degrees um Aquarius in the 12th house which is psychological um it is the sort of the unseen area of the chart it's where we it's where dreams are. It's how I know you can probably talk to ghosts and probably oh should be. Oh my um, God, Aaron. And the, <laughs> it is opposing directly Venus, which is a 22 degrees Leo in the sixth house of physical health and wellness. So what's really important to note there is that there is a correlation and a flow between what happens on the outside and what happens on the inside. And often the things that we are concerns or anxiety is relating to health and sort of physical wellness often our 12th house things relating to our psyche our subconscious and our feelings mm -hmm. and the way we feel about things informs our physical health and then our physical health of course also informs the way we feel about things but sometimes when we get stuck in one domain so like in the sixth house for instance which is just the physical world um it's sort of hard to have perspective and it's hard to sort of discern like what is real, what is, you know, what a, should I be anxious about? Like, should I go to a doctor? Should I not go to a doctor? Um, definitely never go on WebMD. Um, and <laughs> instead of sort of like uh, spinning out in the sixth house, if we approach it through the 12th house, which is the psychological form, we can get a lot more information about what's going on with us what is real or what is just sort of um, us, you know, needing to maybe spend more time with our intuition, needing to spend more time um, with our guides, needing to spend more time on like sort of in, in the spiritual world. So I would really advise um, exploring your spirituality, Erin. I think that that would be really important for you. And I think that that would add a lot of perspective to the sixth house, to your physical wellness. So you could really discern um, what is a problem or mm -hmm. what is something that is actually maybe just like one of your ancestors trying to connect with you. Oh my God, I'm freaking yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean? Like how, how could she take steps? into the spirit i'm having stomach pain it's my grandma maybe oh, oh my god <laughs> she's like it is i recommend like putting a nice little altar together <laughs> um and it doesn't need to be big or dramatic or like uber witchy or anything <laughs> uh you don't need to have like little <laughs> statuettes or anything on it yeah you can just put a space together where you can light some candles you can think about your loved ones who have passed or just the concept of, um, you know, a deeper connection to something that's bigger than yourself um, and have sort of a designated space in your home for that so that if somebody does want to communicate with you, they'll know where to go, you know? Whoa. And if you need to have Paris. space to relax, <laughs> sorry, your dog knows. <laughs> if you need to have space to just sort of like check in with yourself, um, calm your nervous system, do a little breath work, do a little medi meditation, like 
there is already an area set up that is like really rejuvenating and healing and restorative for you so that you can ground yourself in a way that isn't just like, well, do I have, is it something I'm eating? Is it something I, do I need to be exercising more? Do I need to be exercising less? Oh my God, that's me. Which isn't going to provide <laughs> yeah. like all of the right information, you know? Yeah. If you don't have perspective when you're just addressing it from that same frame of reference. Do you know what I mean? Totally. It's really cool because I feel like everything you said, especially about like Aaron and I and like our relationships were pretty spot on. Yeah. Like specifically, which is really cool because I feel like I never really was like looked into astrology or anything. I, I think it's just because it seems overwhelming because there's so many like rising and I don't really, you know, know all of it. But yeah, I think that's really cool. Well, I'm so happy to have done your charts. It's Thank you guys so much for your interest in astrology and being receptive and being such wonderful, super <laughs> chill air moon people You're to welcome. talk to. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Same. I guess for anyone else interested in this, yeah. if you want to like plug all your stuff, let everyone know where they can find you. You mentioned books. Yeah. So I, I would love for everyone to connect with me on okay. Instagram. Um, I am Aliza okay. Kelly, A-L-I-Z-A-K-E-L-O-Y. Um, I have two books out. One is on, uh, Cocktails in Astrology called The Mixology of Astrology. And then the other is called Star and You. And it's a guided oh workbook. And then my next book is called This Is Your Destiny. And it is coming out September 2021. Oh and it's available for pre-order. And I would love if everyone pre-ordered and we got it on the New York Times. Yes. Oh my God, yay. That is so cool. Well, I'll probably go buy it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> thank you. Okay, well, thank you guys for watching. We're, we're going to link everything of hers down below. Make sure to follow her on Instagram and all of her books if you're interested. Thank you so much for coming on. A lot of people have like been asking us forever to like do a video like this. So I think it'll be really interesting for not only us, but a lot of other people. Yeah. So we really appreciate you being yeah. here and taking us guys. on this journey. <laughs> you guys are both equally magical. Oh, thanks. Um, oh my God. Thank you. Love to hear it. <laughs> we will see you guys on Sunday. Bye. Bye.